of all the gritty comeback stories along East Lake Street. The turnaround of Johnny Turnipseed may be the most remarkable. You know, I'm, I'm an alpha male, you know. I've always been an alpha male. Tuesday or Thursday nights, you'll find him here at the Fatherhood Center, trying to stop a generation of young men from making the same mistakes he's made. No, I love what I am, because if I don't love me enough, who's going to love me? Some of them know just how far he's come. The Bloods were my family, and my son, and, and all of my, all my sons and brothers were in it. I was the third brother of five, doing whatever I had to do to survive. Turnip Seed likes to say he was raised by pit bulls, certainly more than his overwhelmed mother or an abusive, absent father. I put a pistol to his head and told him I would kill him at 15. And he knew I would because he raised me. In the early 70s, Turnip Seed became a pimp and a hustler. He'd also organized Minnesota's first prison gang and a founding father of the Rolling 30s Bloods, which once controlled all the drugs between Lake and 38th Street in South Minneapolis. We were all just sort of one big, I don't know what you would call us, criminal enterprise, you know, but it protected us and it hurt a lot of people. The family tree includes cousin Reggie Ferguson, the reputed former leader of the Bloods, and 30 other currently incarcerated kin, 10 doing time for murder, including two of his grandsons. His own son is one of the most notorious criminals in Minnesota, Johnny Lee Edwards, an unreliable snitch hated by both the gangs and the cops. He, he basically had no conscience, and uh, like me, I had no conscience. But something would change all that for Turnip Seed. By the early 90s, he'd taken a lower profile and had quit crack cocaine, but not crime. And uh, then one day my life changed. When did your life change? My life changed. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you put me, you trapped me. It was 17 years ago. Well, he's working at this place, the Resource Center on Chicago Avenue in Minneapolis. And I was the last person Johnny Turnipseed wanted to see. And you had caught me at being a lie. You see, back in 1994, police had caught John Turnipsey running a fencing operation for stolen computer equipment. I had tracked him down to the Resource Center here on Chicago Avenue, where he was teaching a vocational computer class. No one here knew about his past. They assumed he was legit, and I was about ready to blow his cover. That day you were at my office, I, you may not remember it. You do so many stories. You were outside with a camera, and what happened is you were telling people that, you know John Turnipseed? Do you know he's, he's a criminal? It shamed me for the first time in my life. I, I didn't even know shame. And I went up in my office and I barricaded myself while you were downstairs and I just started crying. If the police and it wouldn't have stopped me, um, I'd probably be dead today. If you wouldn't have exposed me, I wouldn't be the person I am today because I'd have just went to prison and I'd have got out and I'd have started it all over again. Well, I don't remember exactly why I took a chance on him, but I did. But there was a reason he didn't go to prison. <laughs> Former Judge Gary Larson, one of the most ardent believers on the bench in second chances. That's what, what we do for a living. You know, we, we use judgment. We have guidelines and I follow the guidelines, but occasionally I don't follow the guidelines because my judgment tells me this is somebody that I should take a chance on. Others took chances too. John was our first customer. He literally. Was the first, literally the first person into our program. Art Erickson runs Urban Ventures, a neighborhood nonprofit in South Minneapolis, which runs the Center for Fatherhood. In the central neighborhood where Turnipseed grew up, 80% of the kids don't have fathers at home. Turnipseed walked in one day, and six years later, he'd become director of the program. And I say that father absence is the biggest problem we have in the neighborhood. V.J. Smith of Mad Dad says Turnip Seat connects with these guys because he's been there. They want to hear realness. They want to hear us get what they call a butt naked. They want us to get for real with them because people are so phony. So phony in the church, so phony in the community, so phony on the streets that they just want to hear some realness. 
and they get that right here. Along the way, Turnip Seed started getting real about his own family. One night, telling the cops where they could find his own son. He knew I turned him in because I loved him, and I didn't. I, I just didn't want him to die I, as a father, and uh, I took that chance. If Turnip Seed's life sounds like the makings of a movie, I make more in a week than you do in a month. Now touch her again, and something gonna happen. Well, it is. A short movie was made a few years ago, charting his life on the streets and how he rose above it. Producers are looking to turn it into a full-length feature. It is certainly an extraordinary and long journey. One man making peace in the neighborhood he once tore apart by making peace with his past as well. My father was the most brutal, um, destructive uh, force in my life. And I love him because he's my father.